Seuraavaksi lavalle nousee mies, jonka tu tutkimus kuulostaa science fictionilta. Se on kuitenkin ihan nykypäivää. Kun keinoälystä tulee yhä yleisempää, mitä me ihmiset odotamme robottien moraalilta. Tervetuloa Michael Laakasua ja Moralities of Intelligent Machines. We have a problem. Suddenly and silently we've been moved into a new era of intelligent machines. As we speak, these machines are being developed to clean our houses, drive our cars, educate our children, treat the ill, patrol our neighborhoods and go to war. But how much thought has been given to human emotion during this process? As it seems, not quite enough. To put it simply, we don't know how we want these machines to behave and act. We don't know how we want them to decide when a difficult moment arise, arises. Think of a self-driving car with five passengers. Think of a child that runs in front of the self-driving car. Now the car needs to decide whether it can break the traffic law and drive into a ditch and endanger the five passengers on board or whether to drive on and possibly injure the child. Since these machines will be functioning between all of us, it matters how we feel about the issue. It's a democratic concern since there is no legislation guiding the implementation of robot morality. If we want these machines to behave morally, we need to understand human emotion first. This is not science fiction, and let me repeat that, this is not science fiction. A quick review of the most relevant news outlets of today reveals, that, reveals the change that has been happening right under our noses. Just eight years ago, a robot cannon killed nine people in its confused state. A couple of weeks ago, a worker was killed in a car factory in Germany by an industrial robot. Some are still denying the problem, and some are blaming the victims, but it's much more complicated than that. The most important science journal on the planet Nature published an article just last July stating that developing moral faculties for robots is the thorniest issue in AI. And at the same time, industry leaders and big names in science are urging a ban on military robots. So what to do? The first step is to understand the problem. That means that we need to collect data. We need to analyze the data, we need to discuss it, and we need to publish it with one word, this means research. Our goal is to use all the standard methods from qualitative sociology to experimental social psychology. And we will, what this means is we will recruit participants, we will build internet questionnaires, we will build computerized lab experiments, organize focus groups, and conduct in-depth interviews. We will also develop realistic 3D environments where people can interact with robots in moral situations. These standardized moral decision-making scenarios can then be used to test and develop robot morality so that we can estimate whether robots satisfy the minimum requirements for moral cognition, moral behavior, and whether they can be, exist, and act among us. We believe that our findings will be beneficial for the industry and we wish to participate in creating the tools for developing moral machines. So, our vision is to create a new field of research, moral psychology of robotics. One would think that such a field already exists, but if you Google moral psychology of robotics, the only thing you will find is our competition entry to Helsinki Challenge. Therefore, we need to raise awareness, participate in public discussions, and hopefully we'll be able to influence policies and laws with our research. An important step in achieving our goal is community engagement. During last months, we've given a course on intelligent machines here in University of Helsinki, and on top of the several magazine, radio, and TV interviews, we have received international media attention in the United States uh, Sweden and Denmark. 
we have formed official ties with the Social Robotics, Reinstit Robotics Institute in Denmark, and we have been asked to participate in a conference in Sweden regarding future work and robotics. As we speak, we're also collaborating with Finnish industry representatives to create a pop-up moral psychology laboratory for the Robotics Week here in Helsinki in November. By 2020, there will be 100 million robots on this planet. International Federation of Robotics estimates that 31 million units will be sold for personal use only by 2017. These robots will be working in virtually every field which is relevant for our everyday lives. Autonomous intelligent machines are already being implemented in law enforcement and transportation. Robots are, all, are already populating elderly care and nursing homes. All this is happening before we've even had a proper discussion or research on the matter. So, how do we feel about this change? Should there be more awareness? Should there be more governance behind it? This is not a trivial issue since robots will be populating every continent of this planet and even the most rural areas. We know this simply because agricultural robots are being developed right here in Helsinki at Aalto University. The future robotics market will be similar in its rapid development to the mobile phone industry or mobile phones market. It will be worth hundreds of billions in revenue. So as we can see, we're already living in a world where robots are becoming permanent part of our lives. We know from history that technological development is Pandora's box torn open. Once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't put it back in anymore. Economic history also tells us that if there is money to be made, the powers that be will do everything in their power to gain from that situation. Our team thinks that we're at crossroads. We're wise enough to see into the future. We clearly see the problem and we understand how to defend ourselves against the escalating problems and challenges of AI and robotics. The question is, shall we use all the tools in our toolbox to create a better future for us and our children? We are moralities of intelligent machines. Thank you for your time and thank you for your attention.